Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry for being late. I was in the other group. I was uh, with the other group because I have some troubles with that group uh, before, but now I am here. I'm hoping that tomorrow we are going to start at the um, the established hour. So now we are going to start with this uh, course. So for the beginning, we are going to make some presentation. Well, that's in my case. Uh, my name is Elena Chavarria, and I am the um, the person in charge with this uh, course. So I'm very glad to be here with you. So we are going to develop some topics and we are going to see something uh, that you can use in your platform and in your uh, space that you are learning English. So, in este caso, mi nombre es Elena Chavarria, yo soy la encargada del curso. Eh, vamos a tratar de ver la mayoría de eh, temas que les van a servir a ustedes con la plataforma y con su aprendizaje del idioma inglés. So, we are going to start because of the time and I am going to share my screen with you because we are going to see uh, the beginning of the course. So let me do something in my screen. Because you are going to see it. Okay, I have here the presentation that we are going to use today to enter this session and these topics. So you are pre-intermediate one, I guess, or and I don't know if I am a run with the number, but you are pre-intermediate. And we, um, I have my name that is Elena Chavarria and we have a phrase of the week. We have a phrase that is something about motivation and it says success is not final, failure is not fatal, and it is the courage to continue that counts. We are going to have some phrases um, with uh, the, uh, the beginning of the week. So we are going to do it for motivation. Success is not final. Failure yes. It's not fatal. It is the courage to continue to count. That's good. So we are going to start the process. So we have a, in the platform that the first topic that we are going to develop is the adverbs before adjectives. And that's the topic number one that we are going to develop in this course. So um, in this case, that we are going to talk about the adverbs before adjectives uh, that we are going to make a review. I know that sometimes uh, we uh, learn something about these two topics. I think that is uh, something easy for you to understand because I think that you have uh, seen these topics before. Antes de comenzar o antes de entrar de lleno a lo que son los eh, adverbs before adjectives, vamos a hacer un pequeño review un eh, recordatorio de qué son los adverbios, qué son los adjetivos, and if we have the content that what is an adverb, the uses, examples, what is an adjective, uh, the uses of the adjectives, some examples, and we are going to develop some exercise. So in this case, we are going to start with the adverbs. It says that an adverb is a part of a speech. An adverb describes a verb, another adverb or an adjective. Adverbs answer how, where, how much, how often, and so on. And also it's talking about questions. So in this case, to begin, we are going to uh, develop the topic of the adverbs. Estamos diciendo que los adverbios eh, son una parte del discurso. That's something uh, easy to understand. Dice que describe tanto a un verbo como a otro adverbio como a un adjetivo. That is the main um, a topic that we are going to develop uh, uh, later on. ¿Qué es lo que nos interesa a nosotros? Es cómo hace el adverbio 
para describir el adjetivo o ponerse antes del adjetivo. But in this case, we are just make the review. So, uh, it says that adverbs answer some questions. Los adverbios nos pueden responder algunas preguntas, ¿verdad? Nos dan información extra. In this case, we are going to answer the questions how, cómo, dónde, cuánto. We are talking about quantity. Eh, ¿Qué tan seguido? Y another questions. So, we have some examples uh, here about the questions. How, how much, where, how often, and when. We have that uh, examples of the question and the information that it gives. So, in this case, we have how, como, secretly, en secreto, eh, fast, rápido, well, bien, quickly, muy rápido, easily, bastante fácil, eh, then we have slowly, que se hace de manera lenta, and then we have accidentally, que es por ac algún accidente, de manera accidental, eh, uh, we have badly, que se hace de manera no muy buena, mala, eh, carefully, bastante, eh, que se le pone como mucho cuidado, Um, closely, bastante cercano. Eh, quietly, que se hace en silencio, tranquilo. Cheerfully, cuando somos muy energéticos y le ponemos mucha energía. Eh, strongly, fuerte. So, in this case, we have some words that uh, can answer the, um, the way we are performing an action. In this case, we are talking about how can we do something. ¿Cómo podemos hacer algo? Esa es la primera columna. How. ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo lo hacemos? ¿Cómo lo, 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 lo vamos a hacer? ¿Cómo vamos a hacer el, el performance de, de la acción? So, then we have how much. We are talking about quantity, cantidades. How much fully, cuando algo está lleno o tiene muchas personas, ¿verdad? O muchas cosas. Almost, casi. Uh, rather, that is um, a way to say that something is Uh, not complete in this case, uh, extremely, extremadamente, entirely, completamente, uh, to that we know that we can say también, but in this case, is, uh, using in, in quantity is bastante, ¿verdad? Uh, fairly, very, just a lot of words. Then where we are asking the question, donde, uh, towards, there, inside, here, Those words that can answer those questions are the adverbs. And we have a lot of words and a lot of examples that can uh, function as an adverb. So then we have adverbs are used to describe verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. They are often, but not always, made by adding L and Y to the adjective. So, It says the example, I walk is slowly, slowly tells us about the verb walk. So in this case, it says, dice que el adverbio nos eh, sirve para eh, describir lo que son los verbos, los adjetivos, o también para describir otros adverbios. In this case, muchos de los adverbios se crean eh, agregándole L, Y al adjetivo. El adjetivo lo utilizamos para crear nuestro adverbio. In this case, we have a slow. A slow is an adverb, um, but when we modify the adverb, the, the adjective, I mean, we can have an adverb. Sabemos que slowly nos está diciendo que alguien está haciendo algo lento. Es un adjetivo que nos describe eh, cómo se hace, ¿verdad? Una cosa. Um, but in this case, cuando le agregamos L y Y al final, pero no siempre todos los adjetivos o los adverbios van a llevar eso al final, vamos a modificar y se va a convertir en un adverbio. Y nos va a modificar el verbo. In this case, slowly tell us about the verb walk. ¿Cómo está caminando la persona? Slowly, bastante lento. Then we have another example that is they work quickly. Quickly is modifying or telling us more about the verb that is work. 
So then we have, we make the comparative and superlative forms of adverbs, but using more in a most. And we have some examples. The number one, she sang loudly. Then we have another example that is, she sang more loudly than her friend. And then she sang most loudly in the class. For these a uh, comparative and superlative, we are going to develop more or learn more about these uh, topics. So in this case, we are going to the beginning. We are talking about the adverb. And it says that an adverb is a word that modifies, describes a verb and an adjective in another adverb. Also, it uh, modifies a whole sentence. Adverb often end in ly, but some look exactly the same as their adjective counterparts. Lo que decíamos, muchos adverbios eh, terminan con l y con y, pero hay otros que se ven exactamente como el adjetivo. But in this case, eh, we have some examples. Tom did not run badly. Tom did not run badly. And then we have, Tom is very tall. Very is the adverb. Then we have the race finished too quickly. Too is the adverb. And it says that in those uh, sentence, it's very easy to identify the adverb. So we are going to continue with the placement of adverbs. Place adverbs as close as possible to the words they are supposed to modify. Tenemos que escribir el adverbio lo más cerca posible de la palabra que queremos modificar. Putting the adverb in the wrong spot can produce an adverb sentence at best and completely change the meaning at worst. Be especially careful about the word only, which is one of the most often misplaced modifiers. Consider the difference between these two sentences. We have two examples. Number one, Philip only feed the cat. And then we have Philip feed only the cat. Cuando estamos hablando de el lugar o el, o donde lo vamos a escribir, Dice que tenemos que escribirlo lo más cerca posible de eh, la palabra que queremos eh, modificar. Porque si lo ponemos en el lugar incorrecto, podemos eh, hacer una oración y cambiar totalmente el significado a algo que no esté correcto. Y que tenemos que tener mucho cuidado con la palabra only, que es una de, eh, de, eh, de las cosas que modifica que está siempre mal escrita porque se pone muy lejos de la palabra que queremos eh, modificar. Y por eso tenemos esos dos ejemplos. Philip only feed the cat. Philip solo alimentó al gato. Y en la otra, Philip feed only the cat. Philip solo alimentó al gato. ¿Ya? Solo lo alimentó a él y a nadie más. Si tenía perros, no alimentó a los perros, solo al gato. En la primera, solo alimenta al gato, pero puede que también le haya puesto agua o le haya dado de comer a los otros animales. Then we have the adjectives. Again, this is a review of the two topics, tanto del el adverb como del adjetivo. So in this case, it says that adjectives is a word that describes a noun or pronoun such as person, place, thing, or idea. Ya sabemos que el adjetivo son palabras que modifican o que describen un nombre, un pronombre, una persona, un lugar, una cosa o una idea. We have a lot of adjectives that we can use to describe, um, for example, people. We are talking about the shape of the, of the body, the color of the hair. Um, we are talking about uh, some characteristics. Uh, we are talking about the color of the, of the clothes that someone is using. The colors are adjectives. The numbers as used as, as adjectives, um, the size, the shape, the taste, uh, the odor, the texture, the sound, and some other words. So in this case, we're saying that the adjectives, we have a list 
muy grande de adjetivos que nos ayudan a identificar, a dar más información sobre una cosa, un animal, un lugar, una persona. In this case, we have some examples in the screen that we have the color. All the colors are used to describe. So in this case, are adjectives. And we have black, blue, coral, green, and pink. And a lot of colors more that can add some information about something or someone. Then the size, big, huge, large, little, short. The shape, a boxy, oval, round, square, triangular, are also adjectives. Then the taste, bitter, sour, sweet, tangy, tart. The odor, odor to flowers, the smell of fresh, musty, salty, stinky. Then the texture, something that we can uh, uh, touch and we can have some textures, bumpy, fury, slimy, smooth, squishy like this one that we have for the stress that are squishy, we can touch it and we have some textures for this kind of things. And those are adjectives because this is squishy. I can squish. So this is the adjective for this kind of tools. Then the sound, faint, harmonious, loud, pleasant, and quiet. Those are also adjectives. Then we have the numbers, few, 50, many, spares, two, one, 11. All the numbers can function as an adjective. Then we have the weather that also it can be used at, as an adjective. We have clear, dry, foggy, rain, and windy. And also we have a lot of things that we can use as an adjective. And in, the, in this case that we are uh, talking about someone, we can say, ah, he is tall, he is handsome, he is ugly, he is um, white skin, uh, black eyes, long hair, um, he is tiny, he is slim, he is uh, fat, he is um, a lot of things that we can say to describe someone that is adjective because they are giving us more information about someone. So, just to make a review. Así que tenemos el adverbio que es el que modifica otros eh, eh, part of speech, como los adjetivos, como los adverbios o como los verbos. Y los adjetivos son aquellas palabras que nos dan más información sobre una cosa, una persona o eh, un animal. So in this case, we have the first, um, the first exercise. And we have here three uh, parts, a student A, a student B, and a student C. We have some questions and we are going to do an oral practice and we are going to have some questions. Let's see the questions. For the uh, student A, we have number one, What is the first thing you notice about someone's appearance? ¿Qué es lo primero que notamos en la apariencia de alguien? In this case, we are going to answer those questions with adjectives. We are going to use the adjectives. ¿Qué vemos primero en alguien? Vamos a describir qué es lo primero que vemos utilizando los adjetivos. Then, do you spend a lot of money on cosmetic products? It is worth it. ¿Gastamos mucho en, en productos cosméticos? ¿Lo vale? You are going to answer it with your opinion. Then, how much time should a person spend looki, looking after their appearance every day? ¿Cuánto tiempo debería una persona gastar, verdad? Eh, mirando, arreglándose o buscando eh, verse mejor, verdad? En, en forma, en la apariencia todos los días. Then, Can an unusual hair color like blue or green ever look good? Un color inusual como el azul o el verde se vería bien en el camello. That's an opinion, but we are using the adjectives. Do you think paint nails look good? Do you ever paint your own? ¿Piensas que las uñas pintadas se ven bien? ¿Alguna vez te has pintado las uñas? 
Then, why do we judge women with their appearance more than men? ¿Por qué juzgamos más a las mujeres por su apariencia que a los hombres? That's opinions. Do you think that beautiful people are most successful in life? Beautiful people. ¿Piensas que las personas bonitas, bellas, hermosas, eh, son más exitosas en la vida? Then, student B, we have uh, seven questions. Number one, can you think of a famous person who is very handsome or beautiful? ¿Puedes pensar en una, en una persona famosa que es bonito o guapo? Bonita o guapo? Because we are using the adjective in this case, we are using handsome for boys, beautiful for, for girls or women. How should a person look during a job interview? ¿Cómo debería de verse una persona en una entrevista de trabajo? Would you consider seeing an image consultant to improve your appearance? Eh, ¿Considerarían eh, ver a, un, con, a una persona que les ayude con su imagen para mejorar la apariencia? Why are ear piercings so popular in many cultures? Do you have them? ¿Por qué los eh, aretes en las orejas son bastante populares en algunas culturas? ¿Ustedes tienen? In this case, we're using just for practice. Why do people believe that appearance is important when choosing a life partner? ¿Por qué las personas creen que la apariencia es importante cuando estamos escogiendo a un compañero de vida? In number five, why do people, uh, I mean, number six, why do we like to see beautiful actors and actresses in films? ¿Por qué nos gusta ver eh, actores o actrices guapos y bonitas en las películas? Number seven, it is possible to know a person's character from their appearance. ¿Es posible conocer a una persona o el, o el carácter de una persona solo por la apariencia? And the student C, if a close friend have a problem with their appearance, would you tell them? Si un amigo cercano tiene problema con su apariencia, le diría. Number two, do you think it is worth spending a lot of money on fashionable clothes? Creen que es, eh, lo vale, ¿verdad? Gastar mucho dinero en ropa que es, que va a la moda. Number three, do you think tattoos look good on a person? Will you ever get one? ¿Piensas que los tatuajes se ven bien en las personas? Eh, ¿Les gustaría tener uno? Do nose piercing look good in your opinion? Will you ever have it done yourself? ¿Piensan que los eh, aretes en la nariz se ven bien en tu opinión? Eh, te harías uno tú mismo do you think there is a connection between beauty and intelligence um, crees que hay una conexión entre la belleza y la inteligencia why do people take so many selfies nowadays how we become self obsessed por qué las personas se toman tantas selfies o tantas fotografías se volvieron obsesivos de ellos mismos and the last one is the popularity of cosmetic surgery a problem in our society es la popularidad de las eh, operaciones cosméticas un problema en nuestra sociedad. Ok. So we have a lot of questions. Now, what are we going eh, to do with those questions? You have to choose some questions. So in this case, we are have the whole group eh, trying to answer those questions. For example, I can choose some of you and you are going to ask this question to another person. Vamos a escoger. For example, yo voy a escoger a alguno de ustedes y ustedes tienen que escoger una pregunta de cualquiera de las tres láminas. Student A, Student B o Student C. Van a escoger esa pregunta y van a escoger a otro de sus eh, classmates o partners in, in, in this eh, course. Van a escoger a alguien más le van a hacer la pregunta and that a person is going to answer with the opinion but also using some adjectives to describe the um, answer. Van a escoger a alguien, le van a preguntar y esa persona tiene que contestar utilizando también adjetivos porque vamos a poner en práctica esto de los adjetivos. Then that person is going to choose another one to ask another question. So, In this case, voy a escoger a una persona primero, luego esta persona pregunta, la otra persona responde, la persona que responde va a preguntarle a alguien más. So, we are going to begin. For the first one, 
who wants to be the first uh, person to ask a question? Who wants to be? Or I can choose. Me, teacher. Okay, Dora, you can ask whatever you want to all of the, your uh, partners. So let's begin. Okay. Um, okay. I choose the student B. Okay. Seven, seven question. Uh, Navy. Who? Uh, para quién es la pregunta? Navy. Navy. Are you here with us? Or we have something in the chat. Let's see. Oh, she can uh, turn on the microphone. She has problem with the microphone. But you can you can ask the question and you can write it in the chat, Nady. Okay. Okay. Nady, it is possible to know a person character from their appearance? Okay. Question number seven. It is possible to know a person's character from the appearance. Okay, she says yes, but why? Why do you think that? No, number seven. No, number seven. Yes, it's number seven. Number five. Number seven, student B and AD. So in this case, in the question seven, um, it's possible to know a person's character from the appearance. Do you think that uh, it's something beautiful? So you can you can um, know someone just for the physical appearance. I think that you are going to uh, answer like that. So she thinks that it is uh, possible to know someone just looking um day appearance so nady i guess yes nady you can uh, write the question that you are going to ask and who is the person that you are going to ask the question you can just uh, write like a student a, a student b or a student c the number of the question and who A student A, okay. The number. Para zero. 
But what is the number of the question? Number one, okay. Zero, the number one of a student A. What is the first thing you notice about someone's appearance? I think the, the person is the clothes, clothes, clothes. Okay, the clothes. The clothes, okay, it's very important for me. Okay, you see the clothes, that's good. So, Ciro, you can ask some questions. So, let's choose. Okay, for Griselda Mejia. Okay, uh, Griselda. A, a student C. Okay. Do you think there's a connection between beautiful and intelligent? Okay. I am not understand the question. Uh, the Student question. C, uh, answer okay, okay. Question, question five. Yes, but uh, she has trouble to understand the question. Okay, la pregunta dice, ¿Piensas que hay una conexión entre la belleza y la inteligencia? Ok. Eh, possible. Eh, de, 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 depende de la persona. Mm -hmm. Depende de la persona. Eh, yes. eh, de... The she or he empeño em, de, ¿cómo sería la palabra empeño? Eh, in the study. Ah, it's the, 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 the performance in the studies, in the studies, and yeah. the work. Yeah. Okay, good. So in the, in, in the, the answer that she wants to say is depending on how the, the person uh, performs the actions and how the person um, do the, the jobs or the um, effort that someone uh, has in the studies, in the work and in the life, it can be a connection between beauty and intelligence. That's good. Griselda, choose a, a question in a person. Griselda, ¿puedes escoger una pregunta y una persona a la que quieras preguntarle? Sorry, no activé the, uh, the, the micro... micro uh, Don't worry. I see the person, my list. And... Gloria Barahona. Gloria Barahona. Eh, Hola. Hola. De, to question how should a person look during a job interview? interview? Okay. Okay. Student B, question number two. How should a person look during a job interview? Okay. I should him or I should her um, that uh, stays uh, I don't know, tranquilo. I forget that. Uh, quiet. Uh, uh, quiet. Quiet. Quiet, no. A state, um, I don't know, teacher, tranquilo, sereno. Okay, uh, you look relaxed 
and uh, you relax, know. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But in the appearance, in la apariencia? Ah, formal. Oh. When people go to an interview, try to dress a formal cloth. Okay, that's good. Formal clothes. And look relaxed in the interview. So, Gloria, you can choose a question and someone to ask that question. Yes, teacher. Santo Bolaños. Santos, okay. Students, C. Question number two. Do you think it is worth spending a lot of money of fashionable, fashionable clothes or clothes? Clothes. Okay. Clothes? Okay. Sí. Do you? Eh, no comprendo del todo la, la pregunta, perdón. Okay, it's, um, let's see, it's number, number two, okay. teacher. Number two. Student okay. C. Student C. Student C. Do you think it's worth spending a lot of money? It's talking about, um, si, es, si vale la pena gastar mucho dinero en cosas que sean como, De, de moda, o sea, la ropa que está de moda, cosas de moda, si vale la pena gastar mucho dinero en eso. I think eh, I think mm, I, yo creo para mí, para mí sería, ¿no? I think uh, It is not uh, worthy. Uh -huh. Ok. That's good. Uh, Santo, you can choose a question and someone that you want to ask. Okay. So, Maritza. Maritza de Villalta. Okay, Maritza. Yes. Uh, student A, the seven. Excuse me, student. Student what? A, student A, question seven. Correcto. Yes. Do you think that beautiful people are more successful in life? Uh, yes. Um, be more be beautiful um, people. Okay. Uh, you say that beautiful people is more su successful in a life. That's good. Um, you can choose someone in a question. Question. Uh, Wendy Ramirez. Uh, student C. Okay, student C. Um, two. Do you think is for a study a lot of money or what you a lot closer? Ah, okay. Student C. Number Question two. two. Yes. Yes, I think is more important. No, it is important to spend money on fashionable things. Yes. That's that's um it is not an incorrect uh answer for those questions because um you know that all of us have different ideas about about these uh, topics so that's good yes. so 
a question and someone that you want to ask the question. Yes, one moment, please. Um, um, okay, student two, question number three, please. Uh, Oscar Guardal. Oscar. I'm sorry, I can, I can hear you the, the question. Repeat, uh, please. Number, <laughs> I not remember. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay, don't worry. <laughs> okay, number, number five. Number five, <laughs> okay. Student B. <laughs> number five. What do you think painting may look good? Do you ever paint your own? Uh, I think that it is only for 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 women for women, women. Mm -hmm. for women. But uh, I I never paint my my own. But I I, I saw uh, some some men with 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 paint. His names. Yes, that's uh, correct. That is your opinion that it is just for women, but there are also men that can uh, do it. So that's good. Oscar, the last question, you can uh, choose the last question and someone that you want to ask. Okay, okay. Uh, for Crisia. Crisia. What are the questions? The students. The student B, question number two. How should a person look during a job interview? Okay. Eh, interview is como una entrevista. Yes, en este caso es una entrevista de trabajo. Okay. Eh, eh, should, should, eh, should look is... Eh, for formal. Yes, formal. Very formal. Mm -hmm. Okay. For a job interview. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing the, the, the screen for a moment. Okay. In this case, we are uh, asking some questions about uh, appearance or something that you um, think about some things. In this case, we have uh, for the first uh, uh, what um, are the first thing that you see in a, in a person when you see it for the first time. And also we have opinions about some uh, details that uh, people use. In this case, we are talking about the nails, the color in the nails, some piercing, tattoos that uh, some person have. And what are the opinion for those uh, things? Also, how a person um, need to look when go to a job interview, and some of you said that it have to be formal. Also, that they have to be quiet, relaxed, and calm, and all of that. That's correct. And then we are going to continue with the topic, but it is almost the time to end the session. So we are going to explain something more about the uh, adjective before, I mean, the adverbs before adjective, but in this case, we are going to use something else and not the presentation that we were saying. We are going to use another uh, document when uh, we can write some information about the uh, adjective, adverbs before adjective. So let me have the document um, ready. 
Then I'm going to share the screen and we are going to develop the this part of the verb or the topic. So we are going to talk about the adverbs of degree. So let's see. So I have here the document where we are going to use to develop this part of the topic. So in this case, we are going to talk about adverse of a degree because we are talking about, um, about the adverb before the adjectives and how can we use it. So we have here the topic that is adverse of degree. And it says that the adverb of degree tell us about the intensity of something. Adverbs of degree are usually placed before the adjective, another adverb, or a verb that they modify. Also, there are some exceptions. The word too, enough, very, and extremely are examples of adverbs of degree. So in this case, the adverbs Tell us about intensity. Nos habla de la intensidad. De eso nos está hablando los adverbios de eh, o other of degree. Nos hablan de la intensidad de algo. Intensity of something. Adverb of degree are usually placed before the adjective. Those adverbs of degree, we are going to write it like this, of degree. Adverb of degree are usually placed before the adjective, adverb, or verb that it modifies, that it modifies. In this case that we are using it, that they, this case. Okay, so we are going to take this like that. Place before the adjective adverb or verb that they modify. So in this case, the adverb of degree are placed before. There are some exceptions that we know that in English, there are a lot of exceptions of these uh, rules. So now we are going to see what are the verbs of degree, what are modifying and some examples. So we are going to insert something like this because we are going to see some examples. In this case, we have the adverb, then we have what are modifying and the example. So for the first one, we have extremely, extremadamente. What are modifying? They are modifying adjectives. And we have an example. The water was extremely cold. So we have here the adverb, and then we have the adjective. Cold is the adjective. So we are going to uh, mark like this. So the water was extremely cold. The agua estaba extremadamente fría. And this uh, adverb is modifying the adjective. Then we have quite, and it modifies an adjective again. And the example is 
The movie is quite interesting. So again, we are going to mark the adverb in the adjective. Why is the adverb, and then we have the adjective. Interesting. La película es un poco interesante, es algo interesante. In this case, we are using quite like this, not like uh, something quiet that is in silence or something that is in calm. In this case, it's, it, it's about um, the intensity. So in this case, the movie is quite interesting. Es algo interesante, un poco interesante. Then we have another adverb that is just. In this case, this word is modifying a verb. And we have the example, he was just leaving. He was just leaving. Él se acaba de ir. So in this case, we have the adverb and then we have the verb with the ing form or gerund that is known. Then we have another one, another example that is almost. Then we have the verb that is modifying a verb again. Then we have, she has almost finished. She has almost. We have here the adverb, and then we have here the verb. Verb in past, this is a regular verb because we are using the ed at the end of the verb. Then we have another example. We have a very that is modifying an adverb. You are, I oh know, she is running very fast. She is running very fast. We are modifying another adverb. In this case, remember that you, we have a, the adverbs that uh, answer some questions. And in this case, in this sentence, it's saying that she is doing something. And we can ask how she is doing that action. Eh, cuando hablábamos de adverbios, estábamos hablando de que respondían ciertas preguntas. En esta última eh, oración, eh, la persona está haciendo algo y cuando nosotros hablábamos de los adverbios decíamos que una de las preguntas que se respondía era cómo, cómo estaban haciendo esa eh, acción. In this case we have run, running, ella está corriendo, pero cómo lo está haciendo muy rápido. So in this case it's giving us the information that how is she doing something. Then we have another example that is modifying another adverb that is enough. And it's modifying an adverb. And then we have the example, you are running fast enough. So in this case, it's saying that she is running fast enough. Está, está corriendo lo más rápido, ¿verdad? Que puede. So then we have the uses of enough. That is the, the last uh, adverb that we are using in these uh, examples. And it says that enough can be used as both an adverb and as a determiner. Podemos utilizar el enough como un ad adverbio o como un determinante. Pero en el caso, ahorita estamos necesitando lo que es el adverbio. So, enough as an adverb, meaning to the necessary degree. 
En adverbio, el enough significa en el grado necesario. Goes after the adjective or adverb that is modifying and not before it as other adverbs do. It can be used both in positive and negative sentence. In the case of uh, enough, we are not using it before the adverb or the adjective. In this case, it is after. And we can use it uh, before and also we can use it for the negative and positive form. Eh, este um, adverbio se utiliza después. In this case, we are not uh, paying an, uh, a lot of attention with this uh, adverb because we are using adverbs that go uh, before the adjectives. So, en este caso, este adverbio no le vamos a poner tanta atención porque básicamente estamos buscando aquellos adverbios que vayan antes del adjetivo. Y en este caso, el enough va después del adjetivo y se puede utilizar en lo que es en positivo y en negativo. So, uh, in this case, it is not uh, just necessary to use it uh, or paying enough attention. Then we have to, the usage of to. And we have to is always an adverb, uh, but it has two distinct, distinct meaning, each with its own usage pattern. Tenemos el to. El to es aquel que utilizamos de esta forma. <coughs> Dice que siempre va a ser un adverbio, pero tiene dos usos. The first one, to, meaning also, we have a one meaning that is also, and it says, to as an adverb meaning also goes at the end of the phrase, the phrase it modifies. De nuevo, no lo vamos a poner mucha atención porque este va al final, siempre va al final cuando el significado es also o en español también. To as an adverb eh, goes at the end. And we have some example. I would like to go swimming too. Me gustaría ir a nadar también at the end of the phrase. Then we have the, mean, the meaning excessively, excesivamente. We have two meanings. And in this case, this is an adverb again and goes before the adjective. This one, it's important because it goes before. Este sí le vamos a poner atención porque va antes del adjetivo. O oh, the adverb, it modifies. It can be used in both affirmative and negative sentence. Se puede utilizar en las dos, en negativa y en positiva. And it says, this coffee is too hot. Este café es demasiado caliente too hard. He works too hard. Él trabaja muy duro. Isn't, isn't she too young? No es ella demasiado joven. I am not too short. No soy muy pequeña. So in this case, we have to, but we have to um, pay enough attention to the usage of to. Tenemos dos usos del to, que es también y excesivamente o algo que está eh, excesivo. Cuando es el segundo significado, sí lo podemos utilizar antes del adjetivo, pero cuando es el primer significado, no lo podemos utilizar antes del de adjetivo, sino que va siempre al final. Así que vamos a quedarnos hasta aquí. Eh, tomorrow we are going to have another session because this week we are going to work Two days and in the next week we are going to work from Monday to Thursday, the four days. So in this week we are going to work um, today and tomorrow. So we are going to have the session number two tomorrow. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Good night, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow.